Hey, it's me. Happy Monday. Um, what you're about to see is something I recorded today uh, at work. Um, it's a little techy, a little geeky, so if you're not into strength of materials and fluid dynamics and all that kind of stuff, stop the video now, turn it off. You're going to be bored to death. Um, and also, for some of you who are really into that kind of stuff, uh, this was just some thoughts that came to mind when I was work at working, at, while I was at work. So, um, there's a lot that was, you know, spoken real quick. So, if you need some further detail about it, please comment. But, here goes. Um, this is a video on sort of hull strength um, for beginners. Um, you know, a hull is a very fluid thing. It's in, a, it's in a fluid, so it's a very dynamic thing with forces. So I'm trying to explain some basics of why the strength, of why I've designed the both the way I designed it with those chines like that. Uh, I think someone asked, have I ever decided to test the strength of those? And it would be um, a shear test or a tension test to see at what load it, it broke at. Um, that would be all good, but it's not really applicable to the way a bolt hull really works. It's not like a regular building that just holds stuff up. It's really um, acting in a very dynamic way, which you're about to see right now. All right. Happy Monday, everybody. Ah, it is, what, the 29th of <laughs> August, and I was just looking at some comments on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for everyone that has viewed and commented but I've been getting some pretty good questions. And I just wanted to go over, <laughs> I'm calling this um, Boat Hulls for Beginners. And so that's me cruising along uh, somewhere in the South Pacific, you know, <laughs> or beam region. So since this is what we want, we want a smiley face Kamal on my boat, the K54. And uh, I guess, what am I? My close hold, I guess I'm close hold. Um, probably on a um, starboard tack. <laughs> anyway, and we want to stay afloat. We want to be happy. We want to have smiles, right? Exactly. So let's talk about hulls. All right, so a hull is different than a uh, regular structure because uh, if you have a typical like building, right? And I'm gonna try to do this and stay in focus. You've got a bearing member and then you've got a load right so this member here has to support that load and it's only dependent on what the strength of this material is to carry that load well well it's a little different so I've got my hull and my hull has very dynamic forces that operate on it you've got um, you know the pressure from the seawater coming at all different angles you know directly you know indirectly but it acts a little different. Unlike this type of structure, um, the boat hull really works not against the water. The water is not a load per se. The water is what the water is. Because the boat is not buttressed or it's not planted in any kind of um, major surface. So you don't have a, a boat, right? I know, please don't kill me. That's like on a mountaintop, right? Because if you had a force hitting that boat on the mountaintop, yeah, the boat has to resist those forces, right? So the boat is in a fluid, and the fluid is all around the boat. So you've got water all around the boat. So the boat can just move. So what the boat, or what these members of the boat really have to resist is the weight of the boat itself. So if you've got a force that's applied to a boat frame, it's not worried about the entire ocean. I mean, don't care what kind of boat you build, it's not going to resist the entire the entirety of any ocean. So what it has to worry about is itself. So that's my little diagram for a little uh, anvil, I guess. And so my boat weighs 18,000 pounds, basically. That's what the displacement is. I'm sorry, 18 tons, 36,000 pounds, fully loaded ready to cruise. Um, light ship is more like 30,000 pounds, but full of gas or fuel, water, provisions, people, food, <laughs> um, about 18 tons. So that's what the structure of 
my hull has to resist. It needs to be able to move itself. And so, let's look at that a little closely. Yes, these are very juvenile drawings, I know, but forgive me. <laughs> so, you have the frame, and the frame itself um, is has to move 18 ton. So there are 32 of these frames, and they all work together. So you have 18 tons divided by 32 frames, which is about 0.56 tons, or about 1,100 pounds. So you have each frame that really, if it's doing its work, it's carrying about 1,100 pounds. And recall also that there are stringers, right, that hold the boat together. So it's almost like a net. Um, there's a network of of frames that go this way and then stringers that go that way so it's really a net uh, effect to if you put the net like this blah 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 that's resisting those forces it's acting together to counteract those forces all right i'm going to bore some of you but I don't care some of you others will appreciate it <laughs> so if we recall the strength the shear strength of Douglas fir is about 1,600 pounds per inches cubed. So for every cubic inch of material you have, it can resist 1,600 pounds in a shear. Um, a shear means that you have a structure and you have a force that's resisting and you have another force that's kind of acting like that and so you could cause a shear like that. Um, a compressive force would be a beam like that and you have a force coming down like that that will compress it. That's dealing with wood. We're talking about wood grain and how it acts. So shear and compression. Um, you also have tension but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, let's get rid of that too much. Alright, so we're talking about 1600 pounds in a shear. So we've got a 3 inch uh, boat frame right so that's one two three cubic inches of material so um, 1600 times three is about 4800 4800 um, you know square pounds 4800 pounds of pressure per cubic inch here so if you imagine multiply that out times what would be the wetted surface right so go back to my little drawing here so if you've got all this wetted surface, you've got probably a good eight feet times three inches. And actually, this part of the boat is five inches here. So you've got an enormous amount of surface that's been impacted by water that has crazy strength to it because we only have to do this. So, you know, basically, if you were to take the... 36,000 pounds and divided by this number you would have uh, really, well that's 3,600, you would have a really good number. Clearly it's less than 10. 10 cubic inches of this stuff to move the entire boat which weighs, where is it at? Yeah, that. So it's um, plenty strong. Oh, no more drawings. <laughs> That's it for today. But I just wanted to talk about it so that uh, you guys would have a good understanding of how the hull works. So if you take, uh, if you've ever seen the way a um, catamaran is, you know, it's pretty thin. You could have, you know, like one, well, not even that, like three eighths inch plywood on a catamaran and, and very lightly framed. Um, Whereas monohulls may have a little bit um, thicker hulls and a little bit thicker frames. But the way it works is because this entire thing works as a unit. So if you have um, a bulkhead and a floor, you know, the bulkhead also provides stiffness. And then your floors also provide stiffness and resistance. And remember, if you have a force working on this, and even though this member maybe in um, shear, you have these members here that are in compression. So, <laughs> and the compressive strength of Douglas fir is about six 
thousand pounds per cubic inch, right? So you've got crazy strength in the boat because the floors are going to be four inches, the decks are going to be at least three inches. So we will see plenty of this on the water. Plenty of smiles. So I hope I totally didn't bore you with all this engineering crap, but I just read the comments and was so moved to do my little pictorial thing. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. And if you have other good questions or inquiries, I really like to help you because I find this absolutely exciting. So I get back to work. I've got some stuff waiting for me, but there we go. All right. So I can't wait to do that one day. Peace and blessings.